Hi there, I'm John Patrick Green. I am the writer and artist of the graphic novel series Investigators, and I'm here to talk to you about uh, my process, how I became a comic book artist and writer, and uh, my series Investigators. So let's jump right in. Investigators is about these two alligators named Mango and Brash, and they are agents of suit which stands for Special Undercover Investigation Teams. And as agents, they wear vests. But these aren't normal vests. These are very exciting spy technology. So the vests have all sorts of gadgets that can pop out and help them during their investigations. And the vests help them go undercover in all sorts of different jobs, uh, be they, you know, chefs or musical conductors, things like that, construction workers, and their stories are told as a comic book, because I make comic books. So I'm going to tell you how I became the person that makes comic books. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with characters like Spider-Man, Batman, things like that. Uh, comics are my favorite form of storytelling, and it all basically begins when I was a little child. Uh, here you can see me. Uh, I'm the little kid in the very stylish uh, red and white checkered blazer. This was kindergarten, I think. Um, I'm showing a picture to my teacher. And that's just basically to demonstrate that when I was a little kid, I really liked to draw. That's probably true for a lot of kids, you know, early on in school. Um, you know, there are a lot of assignments where you're drawing, there are a lot of activities, arts and crafts, uh, but as you get older uh, in school, you know, later on, you know, drawing is less required. Um, but, you know, I liked to draw, so I kept doing it. Um, so, I mean, this is how it all started, how it began. Uh, mostly it starts because when I was that young, um, all the way up through, you know, middle school and a little later, I wasn't in the best of health. I had really bad asthma and allergies, and so I was homesick from school a lot of the time. Um, and this was before we had Nintendo Switches and all the sort of cool things. There was no internet yet. Um, so my favorite thing to do when I was home uh, was read and draw. And my favorite things to, to read were comic strips, uh, such as Peanuts, um, a little later on in life, things like uh, Calvin and Hobbes. And I pretty much learned how to read and draw from comic strips. And these were in the newspaper. And, you know, there are still newspapers today, but back then that's all there was. You know, newspapers would show up on your doorstep, and inside there would be a whole bunch of comic strips. And I learned to draw by copying them. And my favorite one to copy, I got really good at. Uh, and it was this guy, uh, Garfield. I'm sure everyone knows Garfield. Uh, but so Garfield was, was my favorite when I was little. And in around third or fourth grade or so, uh, when I was healthy enough to go to school, all the other kids knew that I could draw Garfield. So they'd ask me for drawings of Garfield. And um, I would, uh, uh, you know, say, I would draw some, some pictures of Garfield and then more kids would ask, so I'd say, give me a dollar and I'll draw Garfield for you. And it got to be, <laughs> it got to this point where enough kids were giving me money um, that the school found out because uh, it turned out a lot of these kids were actually just giving me their lunch money, but they were, were supposed to buy lunch at the school cafeteria. And when all these kids weren't buying their lunch and going home hungry, um, you know, the parents found out, the teachers found out, and so they called my mom and told me and told her that I wasn't allowed to draw Garfield anymore because all these kids are going hungry. It's like they thought I was a bully. I was asking for their lunch money. Um, you know, my mom thought this was funny because I was like in fourth grade or so and I was selling my art. Um, but, you know, my, my, my mom figured, well, you know, it's nice that you're making money selling your art. But at the same time, you don't own Garfield. 
you know, Garfield is owned by this guy, Jim Davis. Um, you can see his name here on the cover. And what that means is I didn't really have permission to sell drawings of Garfield because I didn't create Garfield. Um, but I was still very much a fan of the comic strips. And part of this was because um, if you look at a comic strip here, you can see how uh, a comic strip is basically a short story, right? This is what Garfield looked like in the newspapers. But what it does is it tells a joke by breaking it down into a short story. And a story has three basic elements, as a beginning, a middle, and an end. And aside from, you know, liking, you know, the, the style of Garfield and being able to draw Garfield, what I liked about the comic strips were that they were telling stories. You know, they're telling jokes, they're telling funny stories, but they're still telling stories. And so I was no longer allowed to draw Garfield in school. Uh, and, um, you know, my, my parents, you know, they, they thought it was still cool that I was reading. So they would buy me the Garfield books and I would just pour over them. And, but I still wanted to draw things. So my mom said, you know what, since you don't own Garfield, uh, what you really should do is create your own characters and then you can make stories with those and you can sell those characters. And so that's what I did. And I came up with these characters called the Footsies uh, when I was about 10 or so. And they were kind of just based off of, you know, mix and match of other kids at school or pets or whatever. And I started telling, you know, comic strips. I started making short little jokes uh, with these characters, very similar to the Garfield uh, strips, you know, just three panels telling a joke and a lot of times their their feet would come into play the reason why i call them the footsies is because i gave everyone big feet and part of that is because comics cartoons in general there's usually something about them that's unique that's identifiable and i thought big feet would be you know good material to, to base some jokes off of and so then what i would do is i would take all these strips i would make pages and pages of them and then I would photocopy them and I would staple them together into booklets similar to the Garfield ones that I was a fan of. And then I would sell those booklets to kids at school and just tell them not to get me into trouble, you know, not to use their lunch money. So I did that for a little while until one day my brother, who's a little bit older than me, he came home from school one day with some comic books, like actual comic books. And, you know, I had never actually seen a comic book, you know, but I knew who comic book characters were, you know, like Spider-Man. Because um, when I was a kid, Spider-Man had already been around for about 20 years. So there were Spider-Man toys and Spider-Man cartoons and, you know, Spider-Man t-shirts, you know, sneakers, backpacks. Spider-Man was everywhere, basically. So you could know who Spider-Man was, even though you'd never seen a Spider-Man comic book, which is where he started. And when my brother brought home these comic books and I looked inside, I instantly recognized the similarities between Spider-Man and Garfield in that they're both using, you know, art and words put in boxes to tell stories. You know, the difference was that Garfield was telling just jokes in three square panels. And Spider-Man is telling, you know, a, a superhero story or an adventure story using panels of all different sizes, and there's pages and pages and pages of them. And so when I saw this, you know, it like expanded my mind. And I said, this is what I want to do. I want to tell stories as comic books, not just comic strips. So I took my footsies characters, and I started making comic books with them. And I would put them into adventure type stories. They'd still be funny. There'd still be some jokes. But generally, I was I wanted to just tell more of a narrative, more of a story. And I did the same thing that I had been doing, where I would photocopy the pages and staple them together and sell them to kids at school. And I started doing that, you know, 
around fifth grade is when I started making the comic book version of the footsies, and I did them all the way up until I got into high school. Uh, you know, I would sell these copies to kids at school, and they got pretty popular, and they would ask for more and more. So I would do parodies of other comics or TV shows or movies that I liked um, using my characters, such as I did one for the X-Men called the x Footsies. I did one for Star Trek called Footsie Trek. I did a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one. Um, I did maybe 10 or 11 of them all together. And uh, by the time I got to high school is sort of when your teachers and your parents or whoever will be asking you, what do you want to really do with your life? You know, what do you want your job to be when you're done with school? And you know, I had been enjoying, you know, drawing these comics all this time that I, I kind of knew that I wanted to be an artist. Uh, I want, that's what I really wanted to do. Uh, so I went to, when I got out high school. I went to college. I went to School of Visual Arts, which is an art school in New York City. And there they have painting, sculpture, photography, all sorts of things. And I had to study some of that. But I still wanted to do comics. Like, those comics was still close to my heart. Um, it's really what got me into, you know, drawing in the first place. And when I was there, I met this other kid. Uh, his name is Dave Roman. Um, he uh, has gone on to do his own book series uh, called Astronaut Academy. Uh, it's very cool. You should check it out. But when I met him, uh, it turned out that he and I have the same origin story. And origin stories are a big thing in comic books. And I just told you mine, which is that when I was a little kid, I was very sick. I missed a lot of school. And so when I was home, I would draw comics with my own characters and you know, sell them to other kids at school. Um, and it turns out Dave had that same origin story. When he, he was little, he wasn't very healthy, so he'd make his own comics and sell them to kids at his school. But we didn't know each other growing up. We didn't grow up near each other. So it was just, you know, coincidence. And so when we met and we had this kind of shared history, we thought, hey, you know, we should team up and do comics together. And that's always one of the, the best things about comics uh, that, that, you know, made them so important to me was that comics can easily be done by yourself. You don't need a lot of material. You just need something to draw with, something to draw on, and your imagination. And you can start making comic stories. That's basically it. But you can also work with other people to do it. Um, you know, you can split up the different parts. You know, there's writing, there's drawing, and then there's little parts in between those. You can come up with characters together, and one person can come up with the story. Another person could come up with the words that they're going to say. You know, you can you can brainstorm, and you can do the same with the art, where one person can do the sketches, and another person can pencil, another person can ink over it or do the coloring. Um, you know, it's very easy to do comics by yourself or with the team. So Dave and I thought that would be fun to do some comics together. So we did this uh, uh, while we were in college. We did this series called Jack's Epic. This is uh, one of the collected books right here. Uh, it's, it's sort of a adventure science fiction series about a girl who discovers magic in another realm. Um, so we started doing that while we were in college. And later on, we did a book series called Teen Boat. And Teen Boat is about a boy who can transform into a yacht. We did two of these. Um, they're definitely uh, sillier books. They're more cartoony. Um, again, they're about a boy who can transform into a boat. And the way that Dave and I did those together was that Dave was... The writer and I was the artist and you know Dave's an artist in his own right so occasionally he would draw some of the bits and you know I like coming up with stories and characters so occasionally I would come up with stories and you know character bits but mainly he wrote out what I had to draw and that's how we did comics together
And because of that, because we were doing that in college, when we got out of college, we fortunately managed to get jobs making comics for other people. Uh, Dave, he ended up working at Nickelodeon for a long time. They had a magazine, Nickelodeon magazine. And I ended up working at Disney. And Disney similarly had a magazine called Disney Adventures magazine. And in it were comics uh, based off of dis different Disney movies and TV shows and Pixar movies and stuff like that. You know, there was all sorts of other things in the magazine, puzzles and games, but I worked on the comics. And what that meant was that uh, a lot of times I was uh, doing things like just the lettering or the coloring and other people were doing the, the writing and the art. Um, but occasionally I would be doing art or writing. Um, I was there for about 10 years. And one of the last things uh, that I worked on for Disney were uh, comics based off of Phineas and Ferb. Uh, I'm sure you all know <laughs> that Phineas and Ferb was a cartoon on the Disney Channel uh, a while ago. Uh, it's still a cartoon. Uh, they, they still make um, animated specials every now and then. There was just one on Disney Plus recently. Uh, but Disney used to have a magazine uh, based off of the cartoon. So I didn't work on the animation, but I drew comics based off of the TV show. And so sometimes I would just do part of the art. I would just do like the penciling art and then other people would ink over it and then erase my mistakes or anything like that. And then other people would color it. And occasionally I would do all of the art from start to finish, usually when the story was short, like one or two pages or something. But I was at Disney for a while, as I mentioned, and after being there uh, for so long working on other people's characters, I was kind of reminded of when I was a little kid and uh, my mom was, you know, I was drawing Garfield and my mom was like, you know what you should really do is just create your own characters and tell your own stories. And so that's, you know, I thought about that and that's what I did. Uh, I had this idea for a book called Hippopotamister. Uh, which, uh, if you've seen, is about a hippo who leaves the zoo uh, to try out different human jobs. And that's uh, a comic style uh, story as well. You know, it's, it's art with words in boxes uh, to tell the story. And when I had that idea, I told that idea to an editor. Uh, an editor is someone who works at a publisher. Publishers are the people or companies that make books and put them into stores and libraries and, you know, schools and stuff like that. So you can, you know, buy or borrow or, you know, otherwise read the book. So the editor, you know, they're the people that hear the ideas basically and say, this is a good idea. You should make it into a book. So, you know, Hippopotamister, I did that and it turned out pretty well. And then the, the publisher asked me for more books. And so I did the next series I did was called Kitten Construction Company. This is the second book in the series. This one was very similar to Hippopotamister uh, in terms of length and format and stuff. That's about kittens that do construction. The second book has some dogs. And when that came out, that, that did, you know, well enough. The publisher liked it. And so then they asked me, do you have any other ideas for books? And so now I had to actually sit down and think about what other books that I want to do. Uh, because, uh, you know, eventually you, you, you kind of feel like you might be running out of ideas. So I had to sit down and think of an idea. So I made a list, a brief little list about what stories I like to do. And I like drawing animals. I find them fun to draw. And I like putting them in clothing, such as the kittens wearing, you know, the construction vests and stuff. And I like stories about jobs because uh, they're very relatable. Um, you know, everyone knows what construction workers do, that sort of thing. It's easy to construct a job about that. So now that I had my list, animals in clothing with jobs, uh, I just had to pick one for each. And, you know, I, I quickly settled on alligators wearing vests and solving crimes because the, the joke writes itself. It's not a new joke. 
uh, I didn't really come up with the joke of alligators invests equals investigators. Um, but I thought that would be good material that I could put my own spin on, right? So I had this idea, alligators invest solving crimes, investigators. Now I had to actually make it into a book. And I told that idea to the publisher. They said, sounds great, make it a book. So first, once I had that idea, I had to start drawing the characters. I, had, I didn't know who the characters were. I just had that idea. Uh, so I did some sketches. These are the first sketches I ever did of the characters that would become Mango and Brash. They didn't have names at first, but I drew one with a round chin and one with a squared off chin. And I figured that, you know, that makes good two leading characters uh, that are easy to tell apart because they have completely different chins. Um, and they'll be completely different colored greens. <laughs> So I gave them the names Mango and Brash because um, those names sounded, uh, uh, one sounded a little silly, and I wanted one character to be a little offbeat, a little goofy, and the other one sounds very serious. You know, Brash sounds like a very serious character. Mango sounds a little silly. Um, so now I had the characters, I had to actually turn it into a story. And... You know, everyone thinks that when you're making a story, you start by writing it. Um, you know, that that is the, the process. And that's true. But for a comic, uh, or a comic book, or comic strip, anything visual, you kind of have to see the story. At least this is how it works for me. I have to see the story as I'm writing it. So what I do is I basically sketch out the entire story very, very roughly. It's essentially a rough draft. And this process is sometimes just called sketching, other times it's called thumbnails. And part of that is because you're supposed to draw them, you know, pretty small and, and fast, um, not really any better than stick figures. And I do that for the entire book. I write the entire book like that. Uh, and the reason for that is because it's going to be a long book. It's about 200 pages. And you don't want to draw art looking perfect at the beginning because at the end of the story, when you're done writing it, you might realize you wanted to change something at the beginning. And if you spend a lot of time doing that, you, you know, you have to undo all that work. So you sketch out the story very, very roughly uh, to, to figure out all the beats and make sure the story works. And then once that step is done, what I do is I scan those sketches into the computer and I will cut them out and I will put them into boxes and I will type out the words so that it's easy to read. And this way I have a template that shows every single page, basically, you know, as a, as a skeletal framework for how it's going to look in the final book. And I will send those pages off to the editor at the publisher, and they will be able to read them, and they will be able to see, you know, my stick figures in the boxes, and because the, the words are typed out, they'll be able to read it all. It'll look, you know, nice and understandable. Uh, and then they will read the entire book like that. And they'll tell me if anything needs to be changed, if I need to, you know, rewrite a part of it or add panels uh, with more art and because it's just this framework it's a lot easier to move things around and change things and then once they say this is great thumbs up you can go forth and do the actual art what I'll do is I will print those pages from the computer very very faintly onto artboard and then I will draw over the the printout and basically what that looks like is is this. This might be a little hard to see, but you can kind of see the the blue in this in these word bubbles. That's the text, and that just shows how how faintly I print it out onto this artboard. And I'll do two, I'll put two on a page. Um, and then I will draw over it. 
And because the all the, the text and the sketches is so faint, when I'm done drawing it, I'm done inking it, and I'm erasing my pencils, I can scan that back into the computer and the sketched part and the writing uh, is easy to, to get rid of so you don't see it anymore. Um, and all you see is the fancy line work. And then that digitized version of the line work gets sent to a colorist. And the colorist will color the book digitally in Photoshop usually while I'm drawing the rest of the book. And this is again one of the reasons why you know it's great to do comics by yourself but also working with others can help because it can make it go faster. Uh, again since I'm doing a 200 page book every 10 pages I will draw I'll send to the colorist and then they will color those 10 pages while I'm drawing the next 10 pages and it makes it go a lot faster. And uh, so they will send back the colors and it'll look nice and, you know, spiffy, nice and neat. And the text, which I wrote out in the computer, I can just drop right back into those balloons. Um, and another reason why I, I like to print out uh, those sketches with the text on them is so that way I'll know exactly how big all the balloons need to be to fit all the words. And if you want to see uh, uh, how a page starts from the writing process and how it ends up in the finished book, here's a side-by-side -side showing the same page from the book, um, from the, the first investigator's book. And you can see how similar they are. Um, you know, there's notes, there's things I've scratched out, there's a little alternate dialogue here and there, but basically it shows how close what I saw in my head as far as how the story should go and how it should look and how the finished product is. And that's my process. Uh, when all it's done, you know, everything is done, it gets sent back to the publisher and they will, you know, collect it all and, and print it into a nice fancy looking package, uh, which looks like this. These are the, the first two investigators books. Uh, that are out now. Uh, there is a third book on the way. It comes out in February and the fourth book uh, is done and as of this date I am drawing the fifth book. So there's going to be a whole bunch of them uh, of these adventures of Mango and Brash. I hope you like them and thanks so much for watching.